طيب الرفيقات والرفاق الاعزاء مساء الخير لكم جميعا Dear uh, comrades, uh, good evening. Good evening for you all. أولا نحن سعداء باسمي واسم رفاقي في المنظمة لدعوة الرفاق في حزب العمال الاشتراكي البريطاني للمشاركة في هذا الحدث الذي كنا نتابعه منذ سنوات عديدة ويعتبر من الأحداث الهامة على صعيد اليسار العالمي. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, 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 a thank you for myself and, and my comrades uh, to the Socialist Workers Party for inviting us here today to this uh, important event that we've been uh, following for, for a number of years. Uh, uh, I will touch more uh, precisely on Syria tomorrow in the meeting, and I invite you all to come to the uh, meeting on, on Syria tomorrow that has created some controversy around uh, the left internationally. <laughs> ونسميها المنطقة العربية مجازا بينما عندكم الثقافة الأنجلوساكسونية تطلقون عليها مينا منطقة مينا. But in this meeting uh, I will uh, uh, deal with some of the features of the revolution taking place in the, uh, in, in the region. Uh, here you call it uh, uh, the Middle Eastern uh, uh, region. هذه المنطقة تشهد إذا منذ أكثر من عامين ونصف سلسلة من الثورات بدأت في تونس وصلت إلى مصر واليمن والبحرين وسوريا وأيضا هبت على العراق والأردن والمغرب والسعودية وعدد من البلدان الأخرى في المنطقة بل حتى وصلت إلى تركيا نفسها في المنطقة Tunisia to Egypt, cross it to Bahrain, Yemen, uh, and you know, coming to, to Syria. But other countries have also witnessed some uh, uprisings, uh, uh, in, for example, in what's happening in, in Iraq, Jordan, uh, and even you know what, what happened lately uh, in Turkey. في الحقيقة هذا يدل على شيء أساسي على أن هذه الثورات انتشارها بهذه السرعة خلال أشهر قليلة من بلد إلى آخر. يشير أيضا بين مسائل أخرى على مسألتين أساسيتين الأولى أن هناك فضاء ثقافي سياسي تاريخي ممكن أن نسميه العالم العربي one is that there's a common political uh, uh, reality that we can call it, you know, uh, the Middle East and, and Arab uh, uh, region. Sphere. So, we have to remember that the Arab regimes, whether they were or not, are the we can't forget that the Arab regimes are, um, uh, are quite similar, uh, even if they're dictatorships or uh, monarchic uh, regimes. كما أنها تمارس التنسيق فيما بينها البعض منذ أكثر من خمسين عاما فيما يسمى جامعة الدول العربية. And they also cooperate together for more than fifty years now with what is known as the Arab League. وهناك تنسيق أمني كبير جدا ووثيق كما هو حاصل مثلا في الاتحاد الأوروبي في أيامنا ومنذ سنوات طويلة. There's also تنسيق إيش؟ أمني أمني. Um, police, police, security. Uh, security. There's also security a security cooperation uh, between uh, uh, those uh, uh, countries. Between those countries. أيضا الدوافع الأساسية والعميقة لهذه الثورات هي متشابهة هي اقتصادية اجتماعية وكانت اليوم في الصبح الرفيقة أنا ألكسندر شرحت بشكل كثير تفصيلي وأعتقد حقيقي هذه الدوافع العميقة التي دفعت. في اندلاع الثورات في المنطقة والتي ما تزال في الجوهر وفي قلب الدينامية الثورية الجارية. 
there's, there's a common uh, parameter that links uh, those revolutions together, which is uh, 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 the social justice is issues that Anne described very well in her meeting uh, 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 this, uh, the, uh, earlier uh, on today. أود فقط أن أشير إلى نقطتين أخريتين كمقدمة لفهم السيرورات الثورية الجارية في المنطقة وهو ليس تطبيقا لمقولات أو نصوص لماركسيين كبار بقدر ما أنها تسمح لنا بفهم أحيانا ما يجري الفكرة الأولى التي يمكن أن نتداولها سوية على أنه وسبق أن ذكرنا ذلك أحيانا كثيرا لا توجد ثورات اجتماعية نقية. لا يوجد صراع طبقي عنيف وفق تشيك ليست علينا أن نحدد ما هو متوفر منه من عوامل فإن توافرت أكثر العوامل فهي ثورة اجتماعية لم إن لم يتوافر فنرميها جانبا ولا يعود لنا علاقة بها وأيضا علينا أن نتذكر جيدا التحليل العظيم الواقع الذي فعله مارت في الثامن عشر من برومير عندما تحدث على أن الناس يصنعون هم الناس من يصنعون تاريخهم بأنفسهم ولكنهم يصنعون تاريخهم بظروف لا يختارونها بأنفسهم بل تفرض عليهم and that they make their own history in circumstances that, was, uh, that are uh, imposed upon them and not from their own choosing. ويشدد على فكرة على أن تقاليد جميع الأجيال الغابرة تجثم على أدمغة كالكابوس على أدمغة الأحياء. Uh, and he stresses the idea uh, that um, the, you know, the, 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 the traditions of all the dead generations Ways like a nightmare on the brains of the living. بمعنى أن جماهير العمال والكادحين في منطقتنا في اللحظة التي يقومون فيها من زعامين ونصف بتغيير واقعهم ومجتمعاتهم هم في نفس الوقت أيضا يتغيرون ولكن حاملين ويتخلصون رويدا رويدا من كل التقاليد اللي كانت موجودة في مجتمعنا. نعم عملية تحرر شاملة ما يحصل في بلد. Uh, and that uh, the, the workers and those who are struggling uh, in, in, our, in our countries day in day out carry those things but also lose some of the chains uh, throughout the struggle and the process of the struggle. So there's a continuous process of development uh, throughout uh, the struggle. Sariyan, Wara, the moderator, Yanzur Ila Saati, Alayna Nakul Al An. ما يجري الآن على أن الثورات لم, تتقو... لم تتوقف في المنطقة أنها تتعمق جذريا تتعمق على صعيدين الاجتماعي والديمقراطي السياسي ولكن في نفس الوقت نشهد انكسار بداية انكسار للإسلام السياسي وهو الحدث الكبير الذي جرى في مصر إثر ثلاث مظاهرات العظيمة والكبيرة في 30 يونيو But at the same time, we start seeing the beginning of the, fragment, the breaking down of, of, of political Islam, which we saw, we saw uh, uh, starting in, in Egypt on the 30th uh, of uh, June. فالحقيقة أن الجماهير التي نزلت ضد نظام مرسي وبعدد هائل وضخم ربما لم يشهدوا تاريخ البشرية من قبل نزلت لأن هذه الحكومات الإسلامية التي جاءت عبر مفاوضات مع بقايا النظام القديم لم تقدم أي تحسينا لا على الصعيد السياسي بل كان هناك تراجع على الصعيد الحريات ولا على الصعيد الاقتصادي لأنها كانت أكثر سوءا ونيو ليبرالية من النظام السابق. Uh, 
the reality, uh, the reality is that people uh, went to the street uh, against Morsi, uh, a, a government that came uh, into power because of collaboration with the previous uh, regime, did not improve uh, any uh, of the social or political uh, or democratic conditions of the country. Uh, by contrast, it, it deepened uh, uh, the, and expanded the neoliberal, neoliberalism, uh, poli neoliberal policies. In the this reason, we will consider what happened in Egypt from the entry of the regime is not only a reduction to the demands of the people. No, it was also a military invasion in the same way and the beginning of a civil war to النهوض الجماهيري الثوري في مصر. thus we see that what happened in Egypt with toppling Morsi and the military coming to the force is not because only of power of pressure from 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 the streets. it's part of the process of the counter revolutionary process that has taken place that aims to stop the revolutionary process in Egypt and in the region. هذا الحدث تدخل العسكر في في مصر بالنسبة لنا يشكل بداية على الصعيد الإقليمي لتنسيق بين عدد من الأنظمة للثورة المضادة في بلداننا. This military intervention in Egypt for us represents the beginning of the process of collaboration, the regional collaboration between different powers to start organizing. Strategically, the counter-revolution. لأن الإمبريالية الأمريكية ولا ندخل معكم بالتفاصيل ربما بالأسئلة سأجيب على عدد من التساؤلات كانت مرتبكة جدا منذ عامين في تعاملها مع الأحداث الثورية في بلداننا. Because of because American imperialism was 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 shaking. It was shaken at the beginning of the revolution uh, when they started, and, and maybe we can elaborate more around this in, in, in the questions. بينما كانت القاعدتين الأساسيتين للإمبريالية في منطقتنا وهي السعودية وإسرائيل. The two main uh, uh, centers of uh, imperialism in in the region are Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel. يران بعين القلق الشديد تطور السيرورة السورية على صعيد المنطقة. They were extremely worried of the process of the revolutionary process that was that is developing in the region. السعودية تقف منذ البداية ضد كل الثورات التي جرت إن كانت ضد زين العابدين بن علي ولا حسن مبارك ولا حتى بشار الأسد. Saudi stood against and still does stand against. The revolutions in the region, all of them, be it the revolution against Bin Ali of Tunisia or Bashar al-Assad of Syria. أما موقف مصر إسرائيل مما حصل في سوريا، فسأقول لكم وهو تصريح وزير الدفاع السابق الإسرائيلي يهود باراك. But Israel's position in regards to what's happening in Syria, I will tell it to you in the words of the Ministry of Defense, Yehud Barak. قال. على الدول العظمى أن توفر لبشار الأسد مخرج مشرف وآمن. He said that countries, you know, big countries have to provide a safe exit for بشار الأسد. والحفاظ على الجيش السوري. And the maintenance of the Syrian army. وأجهزة الاستخبارات. And the surveillance services in the country. وحزب البعث. And the Baath party. هذه الفكرة، هذه المقولة لو بحثنا قليلا ودرسنا مواقف الدول العظمى أصلا الإمبريالية إن كانت شرقية أم غربية نرى أنه هذا هو تصورهم لما يجب أن يجري في سوريا وهذا هو روح اتفاق جنيف. عام 2012 30 حزيران 2012 وجنيف الثاني الذين يعدون له بشهر ايلول القادم. This represents the real aspiration you know and the and the sentiment of imperialist forces be in the west or in in the east and this is what represents the Geneva agreement in 2012 and the coming one this is what they want to achieve out of it. 
اذا الثوره المنظ... المضاده تنظم نفسها ولكن الجماهير الشعبيه والكادحه ايضا تعمق من نضالها وكفاحها ومطالبها ان كان في مصر ولا كان في تونس وايضا في سوريا that are deepening uh, 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 that, that, that and, uh, and expanding their demands for social justice, equality uh, uh, and democracy. And you can learn from every country. I mean, I will tell you something simple. The political influence of Islam in Egypt was a positive influence on the Syrian war. And throughout the process, they are learning the lessons uh, from uh, every uh, uh, from every country and, and each uh, example. For example, uh, I'm going to tell you how uh, the, 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 the breaking of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in Egypt uh, uh, as a political Islamic uh, 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 organization is, is, influence, is influencing things uh, in Syria. لأن قسم وهو ضئيل في سوريا مقارنة في مصر مما كان لديه وهما على قدرة قسم من الإسلاميين في سوريا على أن يكون بديلا لنظام الطغمة البرجوازية لبشار الأسد هذا الوهم يزول إلى درجة أن هناك مظاهرات تزداد في المناطق المحررة ضد بعض المجموعات الإسلامية بشعارات تقول لم نثور من أجل استبدال دكتاتور بالدكتاتورية uh, and so you have small groups uh, in Syria that had the aspirations uh, of creating something like what you had uh, in, in Syria or in, uh, with, in Egypt, sorry, with an Islamic government uh, uh, and so on. But now you have demonstrations in those liberated areas coming out and saying uh, we d we have we've not been fighting against a dictator to replace him with another uh, dictator. الرفيقات والرفاق منذ أعوام كثيرة إلى الوراء كنا نحن الاشتراكين الثوريين في بلداننا نتحدث مع الأعضاء الجدد والعمال من كنا نتواصل إليهم ونقول لهم نحن نناضل ونريد أن نناضل معكم سوية طبقة العاملة من أجل الثورة الاشتراكية قيام سلطة العمال والكادحين وهو الشكل الأكثر ديمقراطية لأنها من الأسفل عبر مجالسها فكانوا يستغربون علينا ما تعني مجالس والسوفيتات ليس في الذاكرة التاريخية لشعوبنا هذا الشكل من التنظيم الذاتي والإدارة الذاتية uh, yeah. in the Middle East have been telling and talking and uh, engaging with those who uh, uh, we work with from students and workers uh, and, and the masses and telling them about our aspirations of building a workers' democracy, a real, a real democracy, Soviets uh, and, and so on. But we have seen for two years, whether it was in Egypt and in Syria, in a general way, that the people have been in a general way that the people have been in وايضا ادوات حكمها الذاتي عبر المجالس المحليه والمدنيه but what we've been seeing since the since two years and the beginning of, of the revolution in Egypt and in particular uh, for us in, in Syria is that the, the masses are naturally coming to those processes of, of you know of forming their own communities uh, community uh, bases in which they can democratically decide or, or, or what, what's best for them for them لم يعد خطابنا في هذا المجال اذا خارجيا او اجنبيا او من ذاكره كفاح شعوب اخرى so uh, when we talk about uh, an aspirations for, for workers' democracy, it doesn't seem so alien uh, uh, for people. It seems like a natural thing that is coming from below, from, from within, rather than you know, bringing examples, uh, from, uh, Western, Western examples uh, to, those, to those countries. If we open our eyes, we will have a story that will continue for years on the Syrian Syrians in our country to be in the heart of the Jamaican للكادحين والعمال في بلادنا من أجل انتصار الثورات الجارية من جهة وأيضا من أجل بناء الحزب العمالي الاشتراكي الجماهيري في كل بلد من عندنا. Uh, so 
the, pro the revolutionary process will continue uh, for years. We, the revolutionary socialists, have uh, an obligation to be at the heart of, of those struggles with the masses, step by step, uh, so we can uh, um, uh, build, build, uh, uh, you know, succeed, for the revolutions to succeed and build a better uh, future. Revolutionary uh, party, and, and build, socialist party, and build a revolutionary uh, socialist party. Nice. في هذه المعركة لا أدري ما سيكون عليه الزمن القادم لسنا أنبياء ولا آلهة ولكن ما نحن واثقون منه أننا سنقاتل مع أهلنا وكادحين في بلادنا من أجل القضيتين التي ذكرتها قبل قليل وكلنا إيمان بالنصر وشكرا uh, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, this battle, we don't know how it, how it will end, we're not prophets, we don't know uh, 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 the future, but we have to uh, keep going with it and we are determined that we will keep going with it till victory, inshallah. Okay, thank you, comrades. Uh, uh, I have 15 minutes to speak. Uh, 17 million people uh, went to the streets, so that's less than one minute per million. Uh, uh, so I have to start quickly. Now, make no mistake, this is the second uh, revolutionary wave. This is... Uh, 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 more people were on the streets uh, on the 30th of June uh, than uh, 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 during the 18 days that shook... Uh, uh, that got rid of uh, uh, Mubarak. The size, uh, uh, I mean, we're talking about millions more people on the streets. Uh, the participation of women is unprecedented uh, 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 in, in Egypt. Uh, hundreds of thousands of angry women on the streets of, of Egypt. This is uh, uh, historical uh, uh, events. The Coptic minority, in their, again, the hundreds of thousands uh, were on, on the streets. And more significantly, the geographical spread has changed. So it's not only the big cities where you, you, you saw the first revolution. Uh, this time, it's spread uh, to all kinds of uh, small towns all uh, along uh, uh, the Nile. From Aswan to Alexandria, uh, uh, people were on the streets uh, in their hundreds of uh, thousands and in the big cities, obviously, in their uh, uh, millions. Now, just one thing about this idea that this was all kind of a conspiracy and a coup and, and so on. I mean, if anybody has these abilities, okay, to, 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 to move uh, millions of people, uh, then, then obviously uh, there would not be no chance of, 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 of a revolution and these people would be really wizards uh, of history if you can move these people. Obviously, this was not a conspiracy. This was not... Uh, in, the, in the formal sense, yes, there was a coup. There was a coup that quickly tried to uh, regain stability after this earthquake that is still trying to regain uh, stability uh, under conditions that are impossible uh, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, now, the one other thing about this, this uh, massive revolution is that this time it's against a president that was elected. Uh, through the ballot boxes. People did not wait the four years for the next elections. They went down and took their rights immediately. Uh, now, is there a, a kind of counter-revolutionary forces that are trying to use this? Of course, there always is. If there's a revolution, there is a counter-revolution. There are people that are our enemies that will try to destroy this and try to use it for their uh, uh, gain. But I think they're uh, losing very, very rapidly. Uh, now, is there a counter-revolution in Egypt? Yes, there is. Who runs the counter-revolution? The generals of Egypt. The generals, the same generals that got rid of Mubarak to, to save the regime, uh, this time got rid of Morsi, again to save the same uh, uh, regime. I mean, as uh, um, uh, our friend and comrade Jirber Ashar was saying in a, in a previous meeting, uh, the state, yes, the state is the same. The state has, stayed, has remained the same, but the people have changed. The people have changed beyond recognition. There is no way these generals will be able to control the Egyptian uh, uh, people. Uh, 
The idea that, uh, I mean, one very funny thing about this is that the speed by which the Muslim Brotherhood uh, were, were put aside, were, were uh, uh, put aside by the people, uh, the same people that elected Morsi, that were giving the Muslim Brotherhood a chance to see whether they would be able to, 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 to give in to the demands of the people, were thrown out in, in one year uh, because they were not able to, all, to, 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 to give in to any of the demands of the people. So they continued the same neoliberal policies. They appeased the army, they appeased the same uh, uh, generals. They allowed the police to get, get, literally get away with murder uh, 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 in the last uh, uh, year. Uh, they continued this, the policy of trying to please the Saudi Arabians and the, and the, and the Qataris and, 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 and the US. Uh, so the same uh, uh, policies of Mubarak were car carried out by Morsi uh, uh, and it was obvious to the people that they were swindled. Uh, it didn't take a lot of, of time for them to, to discover that they were swindled and that they, as they removed, I mean it was a, a, a clear thing, as they removed Mubarak, they can remove this guy. Uh, and the speed at which people realized what was happening uh, was again amazing on the 30th of, of June because once people reached a kind of certain critical mass, and people have just kind of learned to know uh, when it's over, they started uh, 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 basically enjoying themselves, you know, ice cream and uh, uh, fireworks, they were already celebrating the fall of the regime. The regime was still there, Morsi was still in the presidential, but that was it, it was over. The people were already celebrating, uh, and they were right, they know. Uh, now, a people that learns these kinds of lessons through struggle, uh, there is no way the generals will be able to keep uh, uh, hold uh, uh, of, uh, of Egypt. And you can see how even what they're trying to do now, they got, they got an 80-year-old neoliberal professor uh, uh, as, as prime minister, a uh, completely useless guy who was previously a minister uh, uh, under the generals uh, when, when the SCAF was, was in control. Uh, his deputy uh, was head of the investment, uh, 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 whatever you call it, uh, during Mubarak's uh, 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 time. Pure neoliberals. So that's the solution. Well, that's what Mubarak was doing. That's what Morsi was doing. That was what was SCAF was doing before. So there's no way this will, will, will go on. And what is happening, as significant as this, is that this comes after wave after wave of workers' struggles. This isn't coming from thin air. This is not just, uh, and, and that's why it's not just simply people power, okay? There is something parallel happening uh, at the same time, which is an unprecedented level of, of, of strikes. We have the highest level of strikes anywhere in the world in the, in the past six months, anywhere in the world. The only country, the only place that sometimes competes with us is Tunisia. That's the only place that kind of, you know, uh, and, and I mean, coming back to Tunisia, I mean, who started the revolution? I mean, now the, in Egypt, we say that it's 2-1 it's now. Uh, and, <laughs> and the Tunisians have to get the equalizer quickly. Uh, we're one step uh, uh, ahead of them now. Uh, so uh, now, now, now what is happening now is that, and it's, and, and it's, you know, people say, ah, but the, the people are, are uh, uh, supporting the army and they, they like the generals and they have the general's pictures and, and so on. The, many of the millions that were on the streets this last week are doing this for the first time. They're being politicized. This is a new wave of politicization, a new wave of radicalization. So they start from the same points that others had started before. It's no wonder that people have kind of illusions. Some people, sections of, of the people that moved have illusions in, in the army. But these illusions uh, evaporate. They've evaporated before. Uh, when Mubarak uh, fell, there were all kinds of slogans about the army. The army is, is, is with the people. The army is of the people and all that kind of bullshit. But that evaporated within weeks when SCAF uh, took uh, uh, control. And very quickly, the, the slogans of down with the army, down with Tantawi, down with the generals, uh, were the main slogans on, on the streets. And again, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands uh, of people. Uh, and, and you say, ah, oh, don't they have a memory? They have a memory. They know the generals very, very well. They know the massacres that took place. They're not going to forget uh, uh, that uh, for a moment. But it takes time for these kind of processes to to, to catch on. Uh, I'll give you an, an example of how the, that's happening. 
I mean, within two days of the army getting rid of uh, 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 Morsi, uh, there was a massacre uh, uh, in which the la latest statistics say 76 Muslim Brotherhood supporters were, were, were shot. Now, whether the, 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 they were trying to kind of get into the, the, presidential, uh, the presidential guards' uh, uh, offices or not it doesn't really matter. This is a massacre by uh, the army, and it very quickly people started questioning. What are these people doing? What are these people? If they're going to kill the Muslim Brotherhood today, maybe they're going to do this with strikers tomorrow. Maybe they're going to do this with demonstrators uh, at some point. So people are, are uh, uh, gaining political uh, consciousness uh, 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 very uh, quickly. Now, there's a very important point is where this is happening. This is happening. Saudi Arabia and the Emirates are not only central in this region, uh, economically, they are they are becoming a, a, a central part uh, of the world, the, the heart of the world finance. I mean, you can see this in, in London. The, 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 the skyline of London is changing due to uh, Qatari and, and Saudi Arabian and Emirati uh, 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 money. They've become a major, especially with the current crisis, the world uh, crisis, they've become a major center, uh, strategic center of, uh, of the financial uh, system. And this, these revolutions, and they're scared like hell of these uh, revolutions. They're taking place all over, all around them. Uh, uh, they're scared because these monarchies are really uh, threatened. Uh, they are right to be scared uh, because these uh, revolutions can only end successfully with the end of these monarchies. There's no midway. <laughs> only when a, a, republic, a republic is announced in Saudi Arabia that replaces that monarchy. Uh, only when the king of Saudi Arabia pays the price any king should, should, should pay, uh, only then will this revolution uh, 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 start advancing. And this has enormous global significance. This means because if Saudi Arabia falls, uh, uh, if Saudi Arabia is seriously threatened even, uh, if the oil supplies are seriously threatened by revolution in this region, uh, the Im implications are uh, global. This means that the Arab revolutions uh, as they continue, and they will continue, we were, we're just seeing this uh, the second revolution, we're going to prepare from now for the third uh, 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 revolution, and it will be even bigger uh, uh, than, than this time. Uh, as these revolutions uh, spread, this puts a huge responsibility, not only on the left in the Arab world, obviously on the left in, in the Arab world, but on the left internationally, uh, uh, because you have a new wave of revolutions that will not keep uh, uh, within the confines of the Arab world and are not even doing that now. You have uh, uh, demonstrations in, in Brazil, or in, in, in Turkey and so on that are moving because of ins being inspired by this. Now, we're still early days to see the effects, the, the effects of, uh, I am sure that in Tunisia there is already a, a rebellion movement, a youth rebellion movement in Tunisia, uh, gathering petitions to get rid of the Nahda uh, 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 regime, and this is spreading throughout uh, uh, the region. So we're going to see the repercussions of this earthquake uh, 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 within the weeks, and, uh, the, the weeks and months coming. But the last point I want to say is the responsibility of the left internationally. The, most leftists spent all their lives to wait to prepare for a revolution. Okay? Now we have the revolution. Uh, unless we get our act together, unless we, have, we, we realize the responsibilities uh, uh, that, that are involved here, uh, unless we are serious uh, about what we're doing, then a historical chance uh, and just wait until you, you see uh, 20 million people on the streets uh, again. It's not as if this happens every day, uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, the size of these uh, protests are a reflection of the fact that this is a global phenomenon. This is something happening of world significance, uh, and it's happening because there is a crisis. Not directly because there's a financial crisis right now that's reflected in this, but there is a crisis of neoliberalism. It's not working. It's not working anywhere. Uh, and you have the beginnings of revolutions against uh, this uh, neoliberalism. There's no better uh, timing for the left uh, to grow. Nothing, what do you expect? Uh, uh, what else do you need uh, to, to grow, to work, to be serious, and to grow as org organizations? Uh, and that responsibility is uh, our international responsibility as revolutionary uh, uh, leftists. 
and it's neither either now we do this or uh, uh, we will we will not be part of of the picture because the picture is changing very very rapidly. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I must say it's um, a honor, and we are also inspired in Nigeria by what's happened in uh, and is happening in Egypt. Uh, my questions when. With regards to um, the comrade from Syria, but we are seeing a sharpening of counter-revolutions collaboration across the region, and we are actually even saw this uh, with um, what happened in Bahrain. I wanted light shed more on in what ways and manners is collaboration within left forces and the trade unions, particularly the newly emergent trade unions within the region towards, I mean, working together in confronting uh, the struggle in the different countries and regionally uh, going on. And with regards to the issue of the struggle in Syria also, the left forces, in the, in the meeting earlier that um, Naguib mentioned, Gilbert Akcha talked about supporting funding of uh, arms for the rebels. And, but all, most of what we hear of is that most of these arms get to uh, the hands of um, Salafis. To what extent can we have uh, more pro-working class forces having access to such arms? And particularly with regards to Egypt at this point in time, I would appreciate more light on how action committees at neighborhood levels, at workplace levels, are working together, are linking together, because at the heart of the emancipatory politics, of course, is the self-activity of the mass. So, and with what you have said of the parallel of working of strikes along with work on the streets, the, it is, the, these are the nascent forms of uh, popular power that can outlive what the military, the Muslim brotherhoods, and so on and so forth stand for as the faces of new liberalism, which the Great Revolution Comrade, going on in Egypt is confronting. Amandla, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I have a question to uh, Sameh. The achievements of the revolution in Egypt are absolutely stupendous. But the challenges at each stage of the revolution for the revolutionary left are enormous. And I want to ask some questions about the Muslim Brotherhood. Not very long ago, we have been told by people all over the world that um, Arab Spring was turning into Islamist winter. And that these, these grossly reactionary organizations were going to seize and destroy the revolution. A very interesting discussion started in the meeting just before this one about the Muslim Brotherhood. The argument that it is indeed a wholly reactionary organisation, a critique of the Socialist Workers' Party in particular for addressing the Muslim Brotherhood in, in, as a very contradictory organisation and in part a reformist organisation. I want to ask about this question because it seems to me that the success of the Brotherhood in becoming the main national opposition in Egypt over 20 years is in part to do with its success in creating what I would call a reformist constituency. Because the failure of the left throughout the Arab world, and particularly in Egypt, the liquidation of the Communist Party in that country years ago, left an enormous space which organisations, particularly like the Brotherhood, came to occupy by pursuing what we might call its welfare strategies. When the Brotherhood won a parliamentary majority in the elections in 2012, it had a political program, a platform, that was to the left of virtually every social democratic party in Europe. And that's why people voted for them. Of course, people have found out that they lied and that the, the Brotherhood could not address the interests and the demands of the movement for bread, freedom and social justice. Now they've been toppled spectacularly. Have they gone for good? I doubt it. But in part that depends upon what the left does now. And for my, uh, my two questions to Sami precisely are what now, as we're in a storm, the storm will continue but maybe it will subside in part and the question will then be what are the strategies for the revolutionary left, not only in relation to the brotherhood, 
but also in relation to those others on the left who, in part, whose conduct over the years created the space which Comrade, allowed the Brotherhood to exert such influence. Thank you. I have to catch my breath. Um, it's very touching to see this and uh, just reminds us again uh, there's a big difference between reading about theory, uh, theories of revolution and being almost a witness of their revolutions actually taking place in such conditions. And I just you know, want to salute comrades in Syria and Egypt, Bahrain, about which we hear so little because our governments are directly complicit in help helping the suppression of the Bahrainis. And I salute comrades like Dominic who make a big deal of giving attention and, and working with solidarity with Bahrain. <clears throat> anyway, my question was for Sama. <laughs> I think I told you what my question was going to be. Um, I'm still in awe with all the revolutions and uh, sort of gives me extra layer of happiness in my life, to be honest. Uh, and I'm in awe with the continuation of the revolutions. As you said, this is the second phase, and you're optimistic that there will be a third phase, which my enthusiasm and my happiness it mirrors in my um, extra bitterness and disappointment in um, how easily it seems to be for progressives, um, I'm not even mentioning conservatives or right-wing, people but progressive academics and colleagues who seem to give up on the revolution so easily and I was quite shocked last week seeing all the commentaries on internet and pieces about the fact that you know the 13th of June was partly also a conspiracy um, people who would normally mock the idea of conspiracy theories mind you who would now say that Tamarod was infiltrated by the army, that the US State Department financed part of the activist movements. For me, that reflected the kind of giving up on the revolutionaries and revolutions so easily while they're still in the middle of continuing that process. So my question is very concrete. I'm a bit fed up with arguing with these people on my account. So could you give us very short uh, sort of... <laughs> empirical uh, evidence or examples how we can counter this discourse. You already alluded to the fact that 20 million people Comrade, can never can be a now? conspiracy. Could you tell us uh, probably something more concrete about how uh, Tamarud organized and how it is not a conspiracy? And secondly, how the argument of democracy and that Morsi was elected is not really a strong argument uh, for us. Please help us make this concrete so we can win the argument and build real solidarity. Thank you for the speakers and the comrades. Um, two things I just wanted to speak about is uh, the Syrian popular movement. Uh, the popular Syrian movement is still alive and has been alive for the two, and I, uh, two uh, last years. And even though we haven't scored any goals yet, uh, we have broken the wall of fear that was the most important in the whole Arab world uh, with Iraq, I think, in the Syrian revolutionary process. And this is something we cannot uh, just put aside. And to show you a few figures in the Syrian popular movement that is still alive, yesterday, for example, there were massive demonstrations all over Syria, people dancing. And if you want to talk about Islamophobia, the way the Syrian revolutionary process has been portrayed, that all Islamists, do you see many Islamists dancing hand in hand and also with girls participating, mixing in demonstrations? I don't think so. So this is one other example of the Islamophobic discourse towards the Syrian revolutionary process. <laughs> In the city of Raqqa, it's the only capital of a province that's been liberated since the middle of March, 42 popular organizations have been registered in the end of June. More than 40 newspapers have been established in the last two years, whereas before in Syria, you had three official newspapers. Oh, don't speak about the quality of them, of course. You have, oh, I will finish on this, the importance of the Syrian revolution on why. The, the Syrian revolution has shown the internationalism. When Gaza was bombarded, they many demonstrated, say, Syrian and uh, Palestinian on one hand. When the Iranian elections happened, you had the wall in Sarakib, uh, a city north of Syria, written in Farsi saying, the people of Syria, the liberation of Syria will be the liberation of this, uh, the Iranian people as well. So the internationalism of the Syrian people has been proven every day and day. And the uh, overthrow of the Syrian regime will be a door for the liberation of Palestine and for the all 
Middle East and North Africa because of the center of the counter-revolution that is the Khalij, the Gulf countries. And this is the way to, to tackle sectarianism and dictatorship. Thank you very much. لن أستطيع أن أجيب على كل التساؤلات بكل الأحوال أنا سعيد جدا أني سمعت شهادة عن الثورة البحرينية وتحديدا لأن الثورة البحرينية هي من الثورات المنسية في منطقتنا <تصفيق> لأن السعودية وأجهزة إعلامها وغيرها حاولت أن تدمغ هذه الثورة بأنها ثورة طائفية للشيعة ضد السنة وهذه كذبة كبيرة وما فعله المتظاهرون في البحرين مثلا وتقريبا في كل مظاهرة أنهم رفعوا في كل مرة لافتات كبيرة تقول شيعي سني واحد في الواقع أن السعودية وقوى الرجعية في المنطقة والأكثر ظلامية في العالم هما موجودين عندنا في المنطقة بلدان الخليج والسعودية تحديدا هذا هو مصدر الظلام إذا كان هناك إمبراطورية للشر فإنها تتكثف في هذه المنطقة لهذا السبب كان عليهم تدخلوا عسكريا في البحرين لسحق هذه الثورة لأنها في عقر دارهم أولا ولهذا السبب هم لم يساعدون الثورة السورية والشعب السوري في كفاحه ضد الدكتاتورية همهم الوحيد هو سحق الثورة الشعبية السورية أيضا لأن السد الأخير أمام التهاب المنطقة كلها في بلدانهم بالثورات الشعبية ما يحصل في المنطقة ليس حصرا على العرب تأثيرات هذا الصراع الطبق العنيف في هذه المنطقة التي نطلق عليها العربية ليس قوميا إنه أممي هناك الآن صراع طبقي عنيف في هذه المنطقة هذه معركتنا جميعا كنا في أوروبا في أمريكا اللاتينية كما كان الحال في ثورات أخرى سابقا إن هزمنا هزمتم وهزمت الطبقة العاملة أيضا ما يحصل في هذه المنطقة هو تسيد عملي وتاريخي كنا نحلم به منذ أكثر من سبعين عاما ما يحصل هو ثورة دائمة بكل معنى الكلمة
first telephone call uh, uh, that uh, General Sisi, who, the real current ruler uh, in Egypt, made was to the king of Saudi uh, Arabia to tell him things are under control, uh, uh, don't worry. Actually, he was a military attaché in Saudi Arabia. That's his kind of CV. Uh, 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 of course, he was educated and trained in Britain and the US, uh, uh, and then uh, served as a military attaché, uh, and now, uh, after being head of the military intelligence, is the, 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 the military uh, uh, ruler, who is full of plans of counter-revolution. I mean, what we saw this comrade talk about in Bahrain, there are plans and plans, but they, they want to crush this revolution in every way uh, uh, possible, and they, will they are using and will use everything. Sectarianism, uh, uh, they put money in all kinds of uh, 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 things to get rid of, of this revolutionary wave, because they are scared, they are terrified. Uh, they are terrified. Since uh, January 2011, these kings and, 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 and princes are extremely uh, uh, scared and they know what it means. They know what a revolution of this uh, uh, size means uh, uh, to them. Now, the, just the question of uh, uh, conspiracy and, and, and Tamarut. Tamarut started off uh, by a group of young uh, leftist Nasserists, actually, uh, 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 activists, uh, uh, um, with this simple idea of uh, a petition. Now, obviously, they, they, they reached 22 million. 22 million Egyptians signed uh, uh, this uh, 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 petition. Now, when 22 million, if you get 22 million to sign on a petition, obviously, it's not just these small groups of activists that were involved. It became a mass movement. Actually, filling in these ap applications became a mass movement, became tens and hundreds of thousands of people, actually became activists in this movement to get uh, 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 signatures. Uh, and that was the kind of the basis of the huge demonstrations that took place. Basically, nearly all of them went out uh, to the streets. All those who signed <laughs> basically went out uh, uh, to the streets. So nothing conspiratorial about that. Are there people that have that are conspiring against this? Of course. Are there, are there people who, uh, in, from the army and, 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 and so on, who will tr and from the intelligence services, who, who try to kind of infiltrate this movement and so on? Of course, that's always the case. But to call a move, even the petition movement of Tamarut, a conspiracy, uh, 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 it's just, uh, I mean, uh, it, it gives so much power to these people that they don't have. If they had that, they would have saved Mubarak uh, to start with. Okay, they don't, they can't, and, and they will never be able uh, uh, to, to conspire in that sense of, of kind of, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the, 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 the last point I want to make about the left and, 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 and so on, first of all, there is a revolutionary left in Egypt and in the Arab uh, world. It is growing, it is growing rapidly, uh, but still much too small uh, for, the, for the hurricane kind of level of, of, of struggle that is, 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 uh, is taking place. But th there is a wider left. It's not just the revolutionary left that, uh, that, that, that exists. There is a wider left. Uh, activists that have come near to socialist ideas uh, uh, through their experience of, of revolution uh, uh, that is much, much wider, much bigger than uh, uh, the revolutionary left in the kind of classical uh, uh, sense. And that kind of wider audience is, or wider uh, groups of, of people, and I'm talking about hundreds of thousands, that need to organize, that need to unite together and use every means possible, including elections, if they're presidential elections, they have to use every means possible to organize, to create a, 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 a a, a clear alternative uh, uh, to both the military and uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. And that's what we should be uh, 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 working for. And we have, uh, I mean, the, the great thing about this revolution is that it's, it's permanent in the obvious sense that it doesn't stop. And because it doesn't stop, it keeps giving us more and more chances. Uh, it's not just a one-off thing, we were there or we weren't there, no. It keeps giving us one more chance after uh, the other to build, to group, to, to organize, to unite, to be able to lead this movement uh, uh, to victory. Thank you.